Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm going to show you how to make this cake from Frozen 2. I know the movie hasn't come out quite yet, it's almost here and I'm kind of excited for it and I figured I wanted to try and make something just for the fun of it. So I am starting with some flowers, those little purple flowers. I used my kit that I have to, you know, stamp them out and use them for a mold and whatever. I kind of cheated. We'll, we'll just say I cheated. Okay, made cheaty purple flowers. And now I'm making some stones. I rolled out some white and gray gum paste together, kind of marbled it. And now I'm cutting out some shapes kind of stonehenge -y. There's this one scene in the trailers that I've seen where they kind of walk into this circle of stones and there's fog and it parts and ooh, you know, exciting. And I thought that'd be kind of cool to try to make. So I'm trying to make it. So I went online, I printed out a picture from that scene of the stones. I was only able to find four of the stones, so I'm kind of modeling them after that. I have a picture that I'm not showing you guys. So that's where I'm getting the shape for these stones from. Each of the stones also has a diamond printed into it, like recessed into it, and inside that is an even smaller one that cuts all the way through. So that's what that hole is there at the top. And you saw the two lines at the bottom, those were just imprints that were on the stone, so I used the back of my knife to put them in. Here's the second stone, uh, it's smaller, weird shape, it's a little more chewed up than the other. Again, I was just following, you know, the picture that I had printed out. Nothing official or too fancy here, it's just a stone. There's the diamond recessed in it, and then I'm just pushing down four little corners, up, down, left, and right, and then I'll go all the way through it even deeper with this tool here, and clean it up with that one. So yeah, you got a diamond and a diamond once again. And here you'll see I'm going to do again, I'm going to use the back of my knife to just kind of press down and make two lines straight across and taper it in at the sides a little bit. Just like that. There you go. Now, I don't know what the Stonehenge has to do with anything in the movie, and I don't know what the symbols mean, but I'm sure it's very important. So, yeah, that's why I chose that. I thought it would be cool looking. <laughs> I just thought it would be neat, so I figured why not, right? Here's the third stone. It's weird shaped. Here's the fourth stone. The picture that I had, like I said, only had four stones in it, so I made the four stones that I saw. Now I'm using my balling tool and the back of my knife again to rough up the stones because they looked like they were very aged and weathered in the picture that I had. So that's why I, I scuffed them all up. And now I'm using some black food coloring with a little bit of water. And I am painting over top of my stones. This is going to give them a even more weathered kind of look, a rough and dirty look. And the paint, or excuse me, the food coloring is going to settle inside the lines and the gashes and chips and stuff that I made to make it look even cooler, okay? So here is my cake dummy that I decided to decorate. Here is my fondant that I'm covering it with. It's just a really dark gray colored. It's kind of marbly, sort of, very slightly. It's hard to see. It is a little bit, but it's, it's a gray color. And I am using the white here that I rolled out real nice and thin and kind of long and I cut into different thicknesses as my birch trees that I'm going to put around the side of the cake. And the forest that they end up in, again, from the trailers I've seen, I haven't seen the movie, um, it seemed very birchy to me. There was, there was a lot of white bark in the pictures, so I'm just kind of emulating that by doing this right here. I'm making, like I said, different sizes. I'm spacing them at different intervals to give it more of a rough forest look rather than a nice clean look using my black food coloring again and a flat edged paintbrush and just making some lines across it to give it that, you know, quintessential bark <laughs> birch tree look. <laughs> there you go. So now I've got my green rolled out nice and thin. That's going to go on top. It's going to cover everything up on top and go over the edges of my trees. And I wanted to rough it up to make it look a little more like grass. So I got an old, you know, uh, cheese grater and use the fine setting and just stamped it and stamped it as you saw me doing there until I got a pretty good little roughed up pattern. I was actually <laughs> kind of happy with it. I thought it turned out pretty good. Then I have lollipop sticks stuck in my, my stones that I then jammed into my, my little cake there, my dummy. And I put them in the order that it was in the picture too. And now I'm putting just some light green um, blobs basically to look like just greenery bushes or something in front of each of the stones 
They don't have a defined shape or anything. I just stuck them in front because it's very, you know, from the pictures I saw, it was very green, very colorful, very pretty there. I'm using three pieces going between the stones. You're going to see the one in the middle there, the one on the left, and the one on the right that you can't see because it's behind the stone. So it's like, you know, Schrodinger's cat. Is it there? Is it not? Who knows? Now those little purple flowers, that I, my cheat flowers that I talked about earlier, they're coming back and they go all over the green, the light green that we put down. And they're also going to put a few, you know, here and there on in the middle of the cake itself, kind of to the edges. All right, now I'm going to show you my Elsa and Anna that I made. I made them in a kind of simplistic way. Um, I, I didn't go for realism. I just wanted the feel of them because I didn't want to you know take away too much from what was going on in the scenery as well I thought it fit in kind of better so as you saw I have just a tapered off point of the light blue I wrapped white around it and now I'm making two little triangles that go up in the front uh, toward the top those are going to be her boots and her boots have like a little point that comes up on the shin of each boot <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right here I'm just cutting it out so I've got two little bad ears there sticking out the top wrap it around nice and tight it's going to have a little pinch at the bottom a little bit of extra at the bottom that i pinched together into a tip using my knife blade i just very carefully split it so i don't hit the blue just the white and then using the knife again make an indentation to separate the two um, not to actually cut through it just to separate it and then i pinched uh, a waist and rounded it off and now it looks like a old-fashioned clothespin so yeah, make a clothespin, <laughs> Anna and Elsa. That's a little bit of a flesh color beige for, for Anna there. She is super pale. I use a piece of spaghetti, put another little piece of beige around it and just try to smooth it together. So now she's got like a chest and neckline and her neck is showing. It was sticking off in the back, so I trimmed it. And there you go. Okay, now we're moving on. This is gonna be more of her clothing. Uh, she has pants and a dress for some reason I don't know so I put the waist on there they come down you know just a little bit past her boots I left them flaring open a bit because I want it kind of looking like the wind is blowing a little so it caught her dress a bit this is a darker color blue too I don't know if you noticed already or not but her under pants and suit is a light color her outer is a slightly darker blue I gave her two skinny little teeny tiny arms and as you may have noticed on the first one I tip the I cut the tip off of the arm in an angle. And this pattern kind of like if I made the letter M out of the gum paste really really thin guys, you got to roll this really thin cuz she's pretty tiny. You know, if you do yours bigger then of course you don't have to go as thin, but mine was very tiny. So, this is going to be her jacket. Um it connects down in the front at her waist. And it's very form-fitting. Everything this woman owns is like super tight. So I don't know how she moves or even lifts her arms, but she does. So we're going tight and form-fitting. She is very business professional here dressed. So once again, just take the other piece. I just folded it over her shoulder. I wasn't worrying about the back of the dress too much because you're not gonna see it. So there you go. That's another little ball of the flesh color that I use for her chest and neck. Putting a little ball on each hand and just pressing it flat. So now it's more like a flattened oval that goes into her hand. And I decided to bend one arm up because why not? I could. <laughs> so I did. I had to find a tiny little ball of gum paste to make her head. And I stuck it right on that piece of spaghetti there like you saw. And I used my thumbnails to just kind of shape it so she wasn't like smooshed like a mushroom head that it actually, you know, came down a little more properly shaped. That is a piece of very light yellow, very light yellow, that I just laid over her shoulder for her trademark braid. Although I did hear in the movie that she actually wears a ponytail and lets her hair down and like, what? But anyway, I gave her a couple little teeny tiny ears, one on each side. And then I'm going to start adding hair to her. Um, keeping it real small, real thin, real simple, real <laughs> basic. I'm just using little, ba uh, kind of like teardrop shapes that's rolled pretty thin. And I'm just starting to layer them. I just layer them, layer, layer them. And as long as you have them layering on top of each other and going back and toward the sides, 
then it's going to look like Elsa because her hair just kind of does that. She's got all these little flyaways. Those are little pieces I'm adding there. Add another little piece there as a little flyaway. And then the last thing I did was I put a little blue belt on her and the two little wings of the back of her dress and yeah, let her dry. Add a little sparkle to her and let her dry. Okay, now we're moving on to Anna. And she is a mixture of black and brown, even though it looks black in this picture. Again, making that old fashioned uh, clothespin shape. I wrapped the bottom of her in brown because her boots are brown and just like Elsa, just wrap it around, you know, pinch off the tip, just so you have a little bit of sticking off the tip. If there's too much, trim it and then, you know, pinch it off again. Split it and then use your knife and separate it and you got a pair of boots, just like that. This is straight up black that I trimmed with the same color brown as before. And this is going to be her dress. I'm going to have her pretty wrapped up in her cloak, so we're not going to see too much of this. And again, I'm going with the breeze blowing in the one direction, so that's why the dress is coming off to the side like that. She has a brown belt that she wears. It's pretty thick. It's pretty corded looking. So I put it around and I use my knife blade as you're seeing here. Put a few indentations in it just for the fun of it. Make it look a little more roughed up. And then the two little pieces of the cloth hanging down because we all wear belts like that. And so does Anna. There you go. Using my knife blade again. Make it look a little fabric-y. And we're good. Okay. This is the cape I was talking about before. I am using purple. I am trimming it in brown. I just rolled up brown and purple really thin because these guys are tiny. Back to the really thin. And then I folded the one edge up against her, as you can see there, because the wind is going to be hitting her left side and blowing out to the right. And then I'm closing up on the top where the brooch would be in the pictures and just letting it kind of fly open to the side a bit on the right side. You see that? And I end up closing it a little bit. So with Anna, I'm not doing any arms or anything. If you wanted to, you could. You would just, you know, use some black and she has got a little more decoration because this cloak is more like a cape. It has holes through her for her arms to go through, not like a coat, proper coat. But that's up to you guys. I did it this way just because, like I said, keeping it simple, just going for that look. I don't know. So I added her head. I don't have to worry about a neck for her because she's all bundled up because the cold does bother her. She's like most of us. And I'm using copper gum paste to make her hair. She has lost her little white stripe that she had from the first one, which I was kind of sad to see. I thought it was kind of cool and roguish, but whatever. She doesn't have it anymore, so she's got her hair pulled back halfway. So I'm using a bunch of little pieces, a little longer and thinner, and just kind of wrapping it around toward the back, and then having the little flyaway parts in the back start at the shoulder. Let them dry. I used a piece of spaghetti and stuck them in the cake and all together. It actually came out pretty cool. You got Anna and Elsa standing in the Stonehenge. So hopefully you like this video. Please check out my other videos. I'd love it if you like and subscribe. That would be great. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.